Hey there, beekeepers. Today we're going to talk about the three main ways for you to get bees in the year 2020. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Hi, I'm Scott McPherson, and this is Beekeeping from Scratch, where it's about the bees. Hi folks, if we haven't met yet, my name is Scott McPherson. I've been a treatment-free beekeeper since 1985. I am starting over from scratch and I'm going through that experience together with you. If you want to learn more about why that is and what that means, please look at this video that I'm linking to above. There are three basic ways for absolute beginners to get their first bees. That is by buying packages, buying splits or nukes, or by catching your own swarms. If this is something that you've been thinking about, leave a comment below and let us know. Before you make a purchase and commit your dollars, you need to decide what kind of beehive you're going to put the bees in first. Watch the previous video in this series to learn the pros and the cons of each hive style. And I'll go ahead and post a link up here as well as at the end of this video so you can find it more easily. All right, let's talk about packages first. Package bees are an artificial swarm of three to five pounds of beehives that have been shaken down into a wire cage called a package. They are given a caged queen and a can of sugar syrup to keep them fed along the journey from the supplier to the retailer and finally to you. And this is what a package looks like. The bees are inside the screen. The queen is put into a small cage like this and suspended from the top of the box. And then that box is covered along with a can of syrup, and that syrup keeps them fed during their journey. One of the advantages of packages is that if you don't already have bees, they are available sooner than any other means. They are also usually the least expensive way to purchase bees, and there are usually more packages available than any other means of getting bees. Packages do come with some drawbacks. The bees are often randomly gathered together from a large collection of beehives before the packages are made. This basically means that the bees are not a single cohesive family unit and there will be some infighting and competition for dominance within the hive. Additionally, the bees will not be role assigned by age and the colony will remain stressed for quite some time until the largest majority of bees are replaced by the queen's progeny. Package bees have a much lower first year overwintering survival rate than any other method of starting bees. More on that and ways to increase your success rate with packages later on in the video. If you are planning on using packages to populate your beehives, please leave a comment below and let us know. All right, now moving on to nucleus hives. Nucleus hives are basically small, established colonies of bees that are ready to be installed in your beehive. This is differentiated from a split, which is essentially a nuke that was just assembled shortly before sale. This is also a decent option as well, but should be less expensive than an overwintered nuke is. Otherwise, once you get home with them, you're going to treat nukes and splits essentially the same way. Nucleus hives usually come with five frames with ample bees, brood, pollen, and honey to support explosive growth in the spring. They do tend to be more expensive than packages, but the benefits of early buildup and successful overwintering far outweigh the additional cost. One thing to note, most often, prior to sale, nukes are placed into temporary hives called jester boxes or jester nukes. The Jester Nuke is an ingenious design meant to reduce the cost to the supplier when sending home bees with their new owners. They are essentially made from folded corrugated plastic, so even though the Nuke is an established hive, they generally can't be supered, and the bees need to be put in more permanent arrangements. Be sure, however, to talk with your supplier so that you know what to expect. He may actually want you to bring your own equipment to put the Nucleus in. Now with the benefits also come some drawbacks. Because the colony is an established hive, it has the potential to carry some unwanted pests or undetected diseases. However, since the colony is supposed to be inspected before it is sold, it is something that isn't likely to happen. However, it is something that you should remain aware of. Another thing to discuss is that the colony may be ready and already be preparing to swarm. So you really need to look at the colony during pickup, and if you can't, look at it as soon as you get home. You want to know whether or not you need to take measures to prevent swarming. If they haven't gotten very far, it's often just as easy as taking an empty frame and placing it in the middle of the brood nest. However, if they have gotten farther in preparations, then you need to cut any and all queen cells out of the colony. If you bought a number of nukes, you could take any frames that have queen cells on them and split them off into their own nucleus hive, and you've got a free new colony of bees. Just make sure that you leave the original queen where she came from. If you do split the colonies, make sure that you feed them well so that they have the opportunity to rebound and get ready for spring. If you find any of this information valuable, please hit like below. All right, now let's talk about swarms. Swarms are the natural fission 
and reproduction mechanism of a colony. It is how the bees reproduce and make more colony of bees when left to their own devices. The instinct for a strong colony to swarm is so strong, in fact, that they may even swarm even after all your attempts to thwart it. There are several benefits to catching swarms to populate your hives. They are free bees, and generally speaking, you catch them in one of two ways. Either you set up hive traps, which are purpose-built beehives for attracting swarming bees, or you get called out to a neighborhood to collect a swarm of bees that is collected in a neighborhood. All you have to do is arrive on site with an empty beehive or a couple of sealable boxes, shake the bees down into the box, seal them up, and bring them home. In a future video, we'll go into more detail about catching swarms. Secondly, they have already proven themselves to be a successful line of bees. They have successfully overwintered and prepared to swarm the following spring. These are probably good bees. Swarming bees are already organized and are ready to build a hive the moment they find a home. Swarms can amaze you at how quickly they can build a home and be ready for the nectar flow without any help from you. The only real drawback of swarms for your first bees is you really are kind of rolling the dice about whether or not you're going to get called to come and pick up some bees. Conversely, you may end up getting called too much and may not be prepared to pick up as many bees as you've been asked. Also, you don't really know the source of the bees or their heritage. And to be honest, you really shouldn't care so much about what race you have in your beehive, so long as you have bees that are adapted to your local area and your flows and can make it through winter. Well, you probably want to have gentle bees too, because you don't want the bees attacking you and your guests or your neighbors. And finally, remember that swarms have demonstrated that they have successfully overwintered and were ready to reproduce this spring. So they've got that going for them. All right, now let's talk about the number one way that you can increase your chances of successfully overwintering your bees this winter. Some interesting studies have been done measuring the success and survival rates of packages and nukes through their first winter. In Maine, one study was done over a three-year period by master beekeeper Aaron McGregor Forbes. The numbers for package bees are very disturbing. However, her study showed that there is something you can do to improve those chances. First-year losses can be greatly improved by introducing a locally bred and mated queen. I think she used the term Northern Queens. But the implication is that locally bred and mated queens have a better chance of surviving winter and being ready for the following spring. Let's go ahead and look at the numbers. Aaron recorded two sets of numbers, percentages that included or did not include disqualified colonies. Disqualifications included colonies that swarmed, superseded, or absconded. The overall numbers show that only 45% of package bees survived their first winter and that 24% were ready for the next spring. Now, if a northern queen is introduced instead of the package queen, the survival rate increases to 73% and the ready for spring rate increases to 63%. That's nearly a three-fold increase in success. However, if you now look at nucleus hives, you see that they have an 81% survival rate and that really makes the nucleus is the way to go. If you want to read more about the study, I'll leave a link down below in the description. And hey, while you're down there, why don't you leave us a comment and let us know whether or not you appreciate the information that we're providing you and let us know whether or not it helps you make better decisions in the beginning of your beekeeping career. Yeah, so packages are cheaper. But if you could also bear the cost of buying a local queen, you could increase the chances of success of your package hives by 300%. And that's huge. The bottom line is, is that the nucleus is king when it comes to first year survival rates and having bees that are ready to go in the spring. So you should at least consider reaching a little bit deeper for that nucleus hive if you can manage to do it. However, as discussed in the previous video, which hive that you chose decides whether or not you can use nucleus hives. If you chose any hive style other than the Langstroth hive, then you are constrained to using packages. And if you buy the local queens, then that's not so bad. Once you have bees, you can use your own bees to increase the number of colonies that you have. No matter which method you use to populate your beehives, you should prepare for and to catch swarms. They are free and at the very least they have survived one winter and successfully reproduced. Additionally and importantly, maintaining a diverse local population of bees is key to finding a bee that is adapted to your area. One that can succeed without your help or maybe even succeed despite the harm that your help is giving them. Alright folks, that's the end of the video and as always, thanks for watching to the end. And please remember to like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that little bell icon so that you get notified of the very next video that we upload. Thanks. Talk about swarms. All right, now let's talk about swarms. Swarms are the natural... Either you set... Either... <laughs> okay, that was horrible. I think she used the term Northern Queens, but the implication... <laughs> the implication is that...
better adapted for northern. So a link to up above here, the hive choice the cho the is that locally adapted queens are better suited. Oh my God.